Ronaldo, define tudo, né? Porque daqui a gente vê quem realmente quer que Jesus vem logo. Aquele que canta com força, ó, vem logo Jesus, porque quer, quer ir para o céu. Agora quem canta, não é? ó, vem logo. Não está preparado, não. Whoever sings, uh, we need to sing this song, Come Lord Jesus, with all our hearts and all our strength, with all our joy, because we express this to the Lord. Lord, I want to go. And the church has this desire. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. Let us open up our Bibles in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22, from verse 1 onward. We are going to have it as a production. Genesis 22, verse 1, says the following. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and said, settled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had uh, told him. Then on the third day Abram lifted his eyes and saw the place afar af 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 off. And Abram said to him, to his young man, uh, stay here with the donkey, the land and I I will uh, go uh, yonder and worship. And when we come back, we come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it in on Isaac, his son. And he took uh, the fire in his hand and a knife. And uh, the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but there is the lamb. Where is the lamb? For a burnt offering. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb of uh, a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. But now, uh, uh, later on, when uh, Abraham was about to kill his um, to kill his son, uh, the Lord prevented him from doing so.
Let's be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Amen. My brethren, the story of Abraham, it's a story that is very beautiful, very well known by the church. Because the story of Abraham tells us, shows us a man that is for us the example of living by faith. Abraham at 75 years of age when he was called by the Lord to serve him in order for him to leave all his projects, his plans, everything that he ha had as a mission, of as ambition, to leave everything aside and to follow the instruction of the Lord. And he said, Lord, here I am. And God promised, and Abraham said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord promised that he was going to be a great nation. And that his descendants were going to be the stars there in heaven, like the sand that we find on the beaches. And all the families are going to be, were going to be blessed. The Lord promised wonderful things to Abraham and he followed the Lord. He left his families, his land, he took up his own family and went towards the call of the Lord. His wife was sterile, but the Lord had promised that from him there will be a great nation. And Abraham waited for this moment to happen. He waited for the miracle to happen. He went, waited for the action of the Lord. And now here in the text that we read, he was, had already 110 years of age. Isaac had already been born. He was uh, already an adolescent. It took 25 years for Isaac to be born, and during this period, God blessed Abraham greatly in every aspect. He became a rich man with many uh, farms, a lot of land and stock, livestock. He was a man with, uh, that was wise, with a lot of experience, but spiritually, Abraham was a servant of the Lord. He was called by God as the friend of God. And Abraham always, in each situation he had, he faced, he always praised the Lord. He always edified an author, an author to God. And he always praised the Lord. Abraham had a great intimacy with God. And now Isaac, now as an adolescent, he was uh, serving the Lord for about 30 years, depending only on the Lord. And now Lord calls and says, Abraham, I want you to offer your son as offering to me. Your son, Isaac, not Ishmael, but Isaac, the one who you love. And what he answered, did he answer? What was his answer? Here I am. My brother, it is difficult for us to understand this. Serving the Lord in the beginning is very good. Hearing the voice of God, wanting to serve the Lord, every beginning is always very nice, especially when things are going well, especially when prosperity comes, joy comes, the riches come. The name Isaac means a smile. Serve the Lord. 
when everything is on our side, it's very, very good. But when things are harder, it's hard for you to hear from men. Here am I, Lord. Normally, we would act differently than Abraham. We would say, Lord, Isaac, are you sure? The son of a promise, the son that have waited for so long. Uh, the promise was from the Lord. Uh, I didn't ask. My wife was sterile. You were the one who started it all. But Abram, no. And many times, my brother, the Lord puts us on a trial like this. Many times, the servant of the Lord is tried. Many times, the Lord allowed the trials. And, and He allows the trials troubles to come so he can see how we are going to act uh, I'm not sure if I would say what Abraham said I'm not sure if you would do the same thing that Abraham did but Abraham trusted the Lord in everything he trusted the Lord for sure Abraham was living having his life completely on the dependence of the Lord, for sure. And for sure, Abraham, he lived, I always remember the promises of the Lord. My brethren, for us to be servants of the Lord, in order for us to have a definition in the Lord, so we may not stutter or all, we always have to remember the promise of the Lord. We can never forget what the Lord once promised to us. We cannot, we can never cancel the call of the Lord upon our lives. We cannot, we can never give less worth to what God has done for us when He called us, when He embraced our soul, when He made us smile, when He gave joy to us once again when He gave us a uh, reason to live once again, when He placed in us a reason to live. If we always remember this, and uh, from now on we give worth to the blessing of the Lord, the promise of the Lord, when the trial comes, when the struggle comes, you will always say, for sure you will say, here I am, Lord. It's difficult to say, but when you're living trusting in the Lord, when you're living, waiting on the blessing of the Lord, the Holy Spirit places this word in your mouth and you will please the Lord. Abraham, for sure, the word tells us that early in the morning, Abraham got up at early dawn and settled the donkey when he's man called Isaac and split the wood for the offering and went to the place the Lord had told him. The word does not tell us that he awoke. The Bible just says that he got up. And I understand that at that night he didn't sleep because I would not have slept. And there are people that live moments of trial, moments of trouble and many times the s s sleep just goes away. Many times it, uh, people go through troubles that when they lose everything. For sure Abraham was living a moment like this. How can he, how could he sleep? How could he rest knowing that that was going to be the last night that he would see his son wake up with his son to play with his son to be able to see his smile to look at him and see the promise of God being fulfilled in the life of Isaac how now? but the word says that Abraham got up and departed 
What was the reaction of Sarah? Abram, where are you going? What is going on, Abram? No. Not at all. You have been deceived. You may have heard something, have heard it wrong. You're crazy. You're not going to offer Isaac as an offering. You can, Abraham. You cannot do this. But Abraham departed because Abraham he trusted the Lord. Abraham once again he was waiting for a miracle from God, and three three days passed, and now he arrived in a place that the Lord had shown to him, and now at the bottom of the the mount he tells to his servant, "So you stay here." You stay here because I'm going with my son and we will come back. We're going to praise the Lord. We're going to adore the Lord. What a word. How can you live like this? Knowing that there everything was going to be finished. It was going to be the end of it all. But still, Abraham, his words words of prophecy. Even so, Abraham he never denied the Lord. In no moment he doubted the power of the Lord. Even so, Abraham, Abraham never despaired and allowed reason to take over his life. But his words were words of praises to the Lord. How oh, can you adore the Lord? doing trials, how can you adore the Lord in, a, in such a difficult moment? How can you, that living in a moment as difficult as maybe not as difficult as, as this, but each trial that uh, arises, it always seems to be the hardest, the most difficult. It may be something that may look small to some, but the worst to others. But even so, Abraham, his word was a word of adoration to the Lord. So the, the offering is different than the sacrifice. God didn't ask Isaac a sacrifice. He asked for an uh, offering. The offering what is the difference? Do you know the difference between offering and sacrifice? The offering is uh, offering on fire, is burnt. The sacrifice came earlier. You get the knife and sacrifice Isaac, like we, they did with the animals, the lamb. This is the sacrifice, but the offering comes later. The offering is the burnt offering on the wood, upon the wood. It's worse. Because Abraham could have thought, hey, if I sacrifice, God may raise him from the dead. But the burnt offering is just ash. The body would not exist anymore. There would no, do, there's not going to be any matter anymore. There would be nothing left. But still, Abraham trusted the Lord because he knew. Because from nothing, God can do all things. Abraham, he depended completely on the Lord because he lived off of the miracle. He didn't live by aimlessly. He knew that for God there is no plan B. God is never uh, taken by surprise. When God says, he fulfills it. When God promises, he acts in our behalf. And in this was in this God that Abraham was trusting. It was on this God, even so Isaac, the matter may have vanished. He was still trusting the Lord. And now he says to those men, stay here because I'm going up. And my brother, there are moments that our moment and our trial and our tribulation is only ours. You may even stay in the church, you may be receiving prayer and visitation from the pastor. Even if you, if you may, may trust in this spiritual environment, but there are moments in which you are alone. Not alone, but only 
you are only with the Lord. But there are moments there you need to kneel down. You cannot leave uh, at moments there you cannot leave only off of prayers from the brethren. You there are moments there you cannot only leave off of uh, pr- words there. They are preached for you, but there are moments that you need to sanctify yourself, and that you need to offer to the Lord um, a worship. There are moments that you need to pay a price. There are moments that you need to bend your knee on the early dawns and pray for your family, pray for your businesses, and pray for your health, because that's how the what the Lord waits for us. Receiving a prayer in church is very good, and receiving a position of the hands is, is good. It's a prophetic act, it's orientation from the Lord, but there are moments in which you need to leave everybody else aside, and you have to speak with the Lord intimately. The Lord waits for you to pray for Him. He wants to hear your prayer. God has thirst for your prayer. He loves those that on early dawn, they get up and pray whoever uh, seeks me in, in the morning finds me early and Abraham goes up he and Isaac he puts the wood on his son he took the knife and the fire and the fire and they go up and this is prophetic there at that moment Isaac represent the person of the Lord Jesus that went up as a, a lamb a silent lamb to the to be killed. Jesus was there. He took the place of man. Isaac represents the Lord Jesus. Here we see all the elements for the sacrifice, all the elements for the adoration, all the elements of power of God, of the justice of God. And now up there, Isaac turned to his father. Isaac knew. Isaac knew the service of the Lord. Isaac had learned how to pray to the Lord. Abraham, for sure. So Isaac asked, My father, there is something wrong. I can see everything here. I see the fire. The, I see the wood. I see the knife. But where is the lamb? So interesting that when Isaac asked, he says, my father, he answered, here I am, my son. This is a month, it's a month in which we're praying for the families. And their fathers, they tell to the Lord, here I am. They're ready to serve the Lord. They're ready to leave everything let go of everything to serve the Lord but many times they don't say here I am inside of their house and it's very beautiful this attitude of Abraham he says here I am to the Lord and now he says here I am my son and there are parents their fathers and mothers their children are losing everything father losing their children father they're losing their homes Children are losing their parents because they are not saying, Here I am. And the here I am is when you stretch your hand, is when you pray for your son. Here I am is when you live the things of this world. Here I am is when you live the things, the material things. Here I am is when you are present inside of a house and when you are together with your family, you are seeking the Lord in prayer. We are paying a price for your family because the family for God is something that is eternal. The family for God is everything that we need to have. That's why tonight always say, here I am my son, here I am my father, here I am my wife, here I am my my husband. Always say that. Because if you don't say that when your son needs the world will say, if you deny, if you are not a father when your son needs you the most, the vices are going to say, here I am. The world teaches, because the world wants this. 
wants to kill, destroy, and steal. The enemy uses things of this world, the, the pleasures of this world, to say, here I am. And many times when we wake up, it's too late. But tonight, in the name of the Lord, say, here I am. Also to your family members. Pray for them. Pay a price for them. Because this is what God has given us. The inheritance that He God has given us. So that uh, Abraham lives uh, teaching to us. So he said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. I can see it. I see everything. Where is the lamb? And Abraham by faith said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb. My brethren, there are moments in our lives, there are situations in our lives which we don't have any answer for. We don't know how to, what to do. It is beyond our reach. There are situations in which we don't have any control over. Infirmity many times, um, unemployment, a trial at home, a, f a trial uh, w within our families, health. What can we do? But uh, in, this, in this moment, uh, by faith, you may say, God will provide for himself the lamb say this the situation is difficult in your house when you have control over the situation say God will provide and God for sure will provide because our God uh, is a God uh, is a provider we have never lacked anything we have never is uh, your saints are never lacked anything so those that are living in a uh, life in prayer and depending on this living God, we have never lacked anything that we we'll never lack because the, the word guarantees this. David said, I never saw the just uh, beg for bread. And this is a promise. This Our God is a God that is a provider. And our God, Abraham, he continues. Now he edifies the the altar, he puts the the wood, he tied Isaac and placed Isaac upon the wood and stretch raise his hand to sacrifice and the angel tells him, Abraham, Abraham, don't do this. So my brethren, when the Lord calls us, he says, Abraham and God says now, Abraham, Abraham don't do this. Every time the Bible, the Jewish people, he, they repeated the word. It was because they wanted to emphasize. When Jesus said, in true and true, I say, when God calls Abraham, he said, Abraham, Abraham, it was because he saw in Abraham, he saw the sincerity of Abraham. When God saw him, he knew that he was going to do this by faith because he was a man that never questioned God. God, the Lord now goes to the rescue of Abram and he provided for him the lamb. When Abram saw, he said, Abram, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for now I know that you Fear God, since you have not with, withheld your son, your only son. So now he saw the the, the lamb there. Yeah, it represents the Lord Jesus because in the moment of trial and difficulty, when we're serving the Lord faithfully, God always send his rescue to his people because God is the one that, who takes care of us. God has taken care of his servants. God brought you here tonight because he wants to take care of you. He wants you to take care of your family. He wants you to understand that if you give to him what, what is the most precious for you, because Abraham, uh, God told him, uh, uh, give me what the one whom you love. Many times God wants us to give to him what, what we think is most precious for us. But don't hand it to the Lord what is what you want to give him if you don't have it in your heart this understanding Lord here I am Lord I don't understand anything I don't know what is going on 
My life is, is completely lost. I don't see the tomorrow. I don't see the answer. But you will say, Here am I, God, because I believe in your power. Say, Here I am. And you will see how God will give you the answer to your prayers. You see how God will solve your problems. You see when you hand to the Lord what you you, you love the most, what you like the most, it is because you can truly place the, the care of the Lord because He takes care the, of those things better than us. Many times God asks of us to test His servants. I don't know what you have for greatest worth in your life, what is most precious, maybe it's living in the United States, or maybe having a bank account that has a high balance, have joy and happiness. My brethren, there will come a moment where you will be tried. And when this moment arrives, may you be seen by the Lord as, uh, in the same way as Abraham has been seen. And that the Lord may speak to you, Abraham, Abraham, don't do this. Because I know that you fear me. I know that you love me. I know that you have not denied me your the son that you love, your only son. And at this moment you will see that God has what is the best for us. Amen. May God therefore bless us. Let's close our eyes as the praise group will be singing a song. And you place your life at this moment in the presence of the Lord and you ask God I believe in your power and I need a blessing from you tonight church to stand up. the name of the Lord.
to Jesus. My brethren, there is nothing better than to live moments like this in the presence of the Lord. There is nothing better. That's why we need to say tonight, Here I am. Lord, here I am. It doesn't matter if you have just been, uh, become a Christian a, a month, what, 10 years, 20, it doesn't matter. You, what matters is that you say, Lord, hear him with the same energy, the same vigor, saying because God's is present, He's in this place, and His desire is to take care of you, I, and take care of our family members, because God has a blessing for each one of us. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise because we have felt your presence among us. We're assured because that you has, have taken care of us, even though sometimes we're, uh, because we're weak and flawed, you we still take care of us. We thank you because the moment our time in this earth is over, and one day we'll be able to stay with you forever and praise your name forever. We thank you for your care. We pray for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. to Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. My brethren, how good it is to hear from the part of the Lord. I take care of you. Don't worry. Everything's under control. My brethren, God does not make mistake. I said at the beginning, there's no plan B for the Lord. God is, take, is in control of everything and he, he always has the best for us. It doesn't matter the circumstance may be, that you may be living in, the trial that you may be going through, or maybe the good, the happy moment that you're living in. But there's nothing better than to be in the presence of the Lord, to know that our names have been written in the book of life and to know that if we pass away now we'll be with him forever in eternity because that's the place that we want to go to amen we're going to pray closing lord father we want to praise your name because once again we were able to praise your name we were able to tonight to say one in a single voice that you have helped us up until now. We want to praise you 
and that you may receive our worship and adoration and that you may continue to bless us and that we may have a week of victories in your presence and that we may see your angels by faith ministering in our behalf breaking the barriers, breaking the difficulties, destroying the difficulties and that we may see with uh, our eyes of faith your victory, what you have prepared for us take us all home in peace that we may never leave a presence, may leave your house but never leave a presence Lord and a prayer with that we make in the name of Jesus and, and then the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of our eternal Father and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever Amen Amen Glory to Jesus the church may be seated the Lord has shown a couple that has many plans but it is interesting that those plans they don't they don't have a place for the most important person which is, which is the Lord Jesus but uh, now but tonight the Lord has, has been able to operate the understanding that everything everything that we can have everything that, that can be done only if the Lord is the, s the person in the center of those projects we can never wait on, uh, aspire only for the benefits but if we place God as the pilot of our boat the one that has control of everything God can give us what we need even more than what we need because our God is a God that is a provider so don't forget to to put in your plans the Lord Jesus because he's the one who is going to bring you to have victories amen we're closing the service if you need prayer we are here at your disposal and I say peace of the Lord to everyone you may raise your hand and we'll go towards you